Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's give this thing a let's give this thing a go here. I'm going to start with a hacksaw here and see what we can do. Now, you see, I got two hacksaws here. Why does Tom have two hacksaws? Well, Tom actually has more than two hacksaws. I got about six hacksaws. But one thing that I like to do is I keep a different pitch blade on each one. So this is a 32 tooth, and this is a 14 tooth here. So I don't have to swap between them. Um, so let's see, I think I'm going to try the 14 because it always cuts faster. And these are these high tension frames. This is a Lennox and this is a Greenlee uh, made in Sweden. Sweden. Um, and like I said, you can keep uh, um, more than one pitch blade on here. So now the question is where do we want to start here? And honestly, I don't think it matters too much. So I think I'm just going to go down the middle here and let's see if we can open this thing up a little bit and uh, see what it looks like. I'm just looking. I'm looking in the cut to see what I can see uh, uh, that it's that it's cut through the the wall. Okay, it felt a little different there. No, still good. Okay, there it is. So uh, I'm through to the inside. Can't quite tell how thick this is. Let's let's go across the space here. I might need a new blade here. Let's uh, let's give this one a go. You know what? I think the set's knocked off of both of these. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap some blades here, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're swapping the blades here. Now these have two different styles of uh, of knob here. Okay, so this one has a a little butterfly one here. Okay, well it looks kind of nice and stylish. But the Linux has a superior one. It has a fold-out handle here that you can actually get some leverage on. Okay, and uh, so I believe it's superior myself to the uh, to the knob. Although the knob, you can still do a pretty good uh, you can do a pretty good job. Now uh, let's uh, snug that up. Okay, get it nice and tight, and then, okay, so, let's uh, have at it again here. Oh, much better. So that blade was wasted. Alright, so now I'm through. I can see, see in there, let's, uh, Well, there's no noxious gases coming out of here or anything like that. So let's uh, let's work our way around this thing a little bit. And um, actually, maybe what I'll do is uh, I got I got an idea. So let me uh, let me do a little more cutting. I'll do that up. You see all this? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll do a little more cutting, and then uh, we'll go to stage two uh, to peel this thing open. So. All right. So let's let's give it a try here. I'm going to use a. a uh, a diamond chisel here and see if we can knock this corner out and uh, and get onto this thing here so I'm gonna need to create a better a better starting spot here Oops. <laughs> All right. So, I don't know if that's a chip or if this chisel is soft. Could be soft. Okay. Let's try something else. <laughs> All right. So, let's uh, 
Let's go to plan B here. Mr. Chisel was not happy. Oops. Cut. Okay, well that was my that was my buddy Don uh, calling me and uh, we're planning a trip down to uh, um, down south that'll make some interesting videos. So uh, anyway you guys will see that. But let's let's work on this thing here. <laughs> To get a corner off here. All right. Well, now we get a we get a little bit of a look in there. Ooh, that's part of the well. Hey, look at that. That's the icicle part of the weld. <laughs> All right, well, I, there's something in there. I can feel it. It's it's kind of squishy. It's wrapped up in something. Maybe uh but I can push it uh, I can push it away from this. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just uh cut down the side of this here and uh I don't know, maybe I, I, you know what, I think I'm just going to cut the end off here, I'll just saw the end off here. <laughs> Instead of sawing to there and not being able to get it out, so let's, uh... So, I'm, I'm smelling in there and it smells, uh, like something got warm in there. <laughs> it's got that smell. So let's, uh, let's do a little sawing along the seam here. Actually, let's do this first. in there is kind of pushed off to that end. Let's see if we can uh oh yeah yeah I got a clear I got a clear space there. Okay well I got a little saw in here. Um it's probably a little bit boring video but let me uh let me slice this end off and then I'll I'll bring you back right when I'm I'm ready to peel it open so you know on a whim uh I decided to try a different chisel just for fun and this is a uh, an older plum um, that um, I believe Stan sent me this in another lot of tools but I tried it on the corner here and it's working pretty good and it is completely holding up perfectly to the edge or uh, the edge is holding up where this one <laughs> where this one went away pretty quick now this is a proto here um, and um, now it's been ground a few times, so it's it's pretty easy to overheat them when you grind them and uh, and soften them up. But I've been talking to some folks, and so your older chisels and your older cutting tools they're a lot harder than the modern cutting tools. So this is definitely newer than that. Um, this is probably 50s or 40s vintage here, and uh, this is uh, you know they got registered trademarks stuff like that so uh, my guess is uh, this is 60s, 70s, 80s maybe you know uh, who knows and uh, definitely softer heat treat uh, overall um, uh, than uh, older tools but this this one's actually kind of working here and I'm using a copper hammer because it doesn't slide off and the seams starting to open up Is, uh, so you can let's uh, let's get through that. You can see it's peeling that seam back there. Well, let's get the other side going, and maybe we can just open this up like a like a can of tuna or something like that. Or uh, oh wait, this is uh, this is Georgia rules maybe. Uh, so maybe it's a can of possum. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna work this a little bit. Let's see where we go with it. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm having fun. Are you having fun? Good. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a heavier hammer. This is a bronze hammer now. <laughs> now, keep in mind, this is stainless steel. Look at that tool. Totally holding up fine. It's, it's perfect still. Yeah, pretty close to perfect. So, uh, <laughs> you know what? Big difference. Animal. <laughs> oh, it's leather. It's like some old gloves or something. Anyway, I'm having fun. That's all that matters, right? All right, let's see if we can pop this thing. What? I need it that way. All right, let's see if we can pop that. Jody must have welded that corner. That one's hanging in there. This one's popping here. <laughs> Let's see if I can see. Maybe I'm, oh yeah, there, okay. There's the same. I'm a little high, actually, so let's drop down a little. Well, that one's, that one's good. That one's a, that one's a tough seam there. I'm getting tired. <laughs> All right. You know what? All right, I'm getting tired of screwing around with this thing. Okay. Make sure we can see this. <laughs> okay, there's something in there. That's in there pretty tight. Uh oh.
Hmm. Wow, there's actually paper in here. How do you like that? They welded it shut with paper in it. Whoever that may be. <laughs> Let's uh, let's regroup here. Let's open it up sideways a little bit. I think you got to Yeah, it's helping. It's kind of tight in there. I guess it shrunk a little bit or something. Okay. Gah. Gah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay, good one guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. Perfect. It's the Russian doll. Oh my god. What's next? What's next? Let's see if there's a if there's a message here for us. <laughs> Good one. Dear Tom, we wanted to be sure that this package was undamaged upon arrival and this this kind folks at the post office suggested that we double pack. <laughs> we were just trying to make sure that it arrived safely. Okay, anonymous. <laughs> okay, well, all right, I guess uh, that calls for uh, stage three, eh? Now, let's see. Oh, see, they ran out of stainless. <laughs> this one's steel here, so uh, this might actually uh, be slightly easier. And that is a little thicker than I, uh, that looks like 12 gauge there to me now. And that's the stainless box that it was in. Uh, Mr. Bozo's not very happy right now. All right, let's go to stage three here. <laughs> okay, so. Cut through the corner on here. Okay, this box is thinner, I think. I think. Pretty sure it's thinner. All right, so let's go right down, uh, right down that way there. I think that was the uh, we the most efficient method we discovered. The chisel was uh, was fun, but it was too still. It was too slow. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what do I want to do here? 
Well, it looks suspiciously like a fusion weld to me. I wonder... Uh, if I can crack that thing uh, easily, so... Uh, na -na 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 -na. actually work on this one here. Yeah. So, okay, little, uh, so I looked at this weld and it looks like a fusion weld to me, okay, just because it's uh, the contour of it on both sides. So basically this is like casting, um, it's called we call it continuous casting also. So it's actually really easy to fracture, in particular in steel. Stainless not so much because it's very has a high elongation. But steel here, you see I've already I've already split this all the way down to there. So that's what we're gonna do with this guy. Is we're just gonna open it by cracking that weld open from our esteemed our esteemed partners in uh It's just all right, and you see that weld is fractured along there. So, if you want strong welds, always use filler filler rod. If you just need a uh, a seal weld for something, uh, fusion's okay. <sighs> More leather. Well, I can see something in here now, so uh, let me uh, move the camera around, make sure you guys can see this properly, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll open this all the way up, or pull out whatever's in here. <laughs> I think that was just to, that was just to fake me out. Okay, it's gonna be our little our little stage here. So open up whatever's in here. Oh, look at that! <laughs> now, okay, that was unrehearsed. Just so you guys know, it's actually pointing at the camera, and that was pure luck. Okay, wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Oh, so, okay, I, I get it now. Um, so this, yep, this is done. This is um, uh, 3D printed. So this is ABS, um, and I suspect that uh, Mr. Charles Marlin is involved in this plan here. But we've been experimenting with this 3D printing for um, doing uh, patterns uh, for casting. And uh, this is probably the, um, um, in fact, look, there's a little screw hole where you jab a, a screw in there, put a screw in there so you can pluck it out of the sand or whatever, right? But uh, this was, this, the pattern for this was 3D printed from a computer model. And you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that there's draft on all of those uh, surfaces so that thing pulls. Very cool. And look at that, the little ox logo there, solid brass or bronze, brass. And uh, very, very cool, thanks guys. So this is, uh, my guess is the culprits here are uh, Keith Rucker and Charles Marlin. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Actually, get rid of those.
Oh yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> there's a uh, there's there's a big uh, big letter here. Uh, I'll, you, I'll have to read this. And uh, and uh, anyway, yes, it's from Keith Rucker. Keith, thank you very much. That was great. I love the double packaging. That was awesome. Um, completely caught me off guard. I thought I I thought I had it made once I opened the bozo container, and uh, but uh, I had to keep digging here. So. Uh, that's a really awesome gift, and I'm pretty sure, well, actually, you know what, um, hmm, Keith has his own 3D printer now, so maybe he did this himself, I'm not sure, so I'll have to read this and, uh, and see what it says here. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, uh, uh, that was fun, that was a fun little, uh, fun little exercise. <laughs> okay, well, there's, there's the wreckage to get into these things, um, so uh, we did pretty good, we used the... Uh, Two, two hammers, uh, two saws, and, uh, and two chisels to get into these, uh, these, uh, these guys here. I'll bring you in a little closer for a zoom in on these guys. Uh, these are actually really nice, and the culprits are uh, uh, the Three Stooges. We got Charles Marlin, we got Keith Rucker, and then we got Adam Booth. He was involved with this, uh, this whole thing. And uh, so, uh, so now it's up to you guys to guess which one's Larry, which one's Mo, and which one's Curly. So uh, let's zoom in on these and you guys can get a look at this and uh, I'll clean this mess up and <laughs> move on to the next thing. <laughs> okay, so there's a close-up of these things here. Let's uh, put a scale across there for... Uh... Oh, that's the metric side. That doesn't work for you guys, right? So <laughs> there's the inch side. <laughs> You get an idea of size. And this is the 3D printed pattern here. And if you look on the back here, um, you can see the, uh, you can see these striations here from the layers. Uh, uh, in fact, you can hear it there. And uh, this is just really cool. This is just a wonderful technique here where we're combining, um, so this was modeled in SolidWorks and then um, 3D printed and then cast, it rammed up and cast in kind of old timey sand, okay, and a little sand casting. So um, this is a wonderful mix of old and new technologies and uh, so if you have a 3D modeling program and access to a 3D printer you can reproduce parts um, uh, very easily um, in in using an old method in uh, in modern techniques. It's just it's just great, guys. I just love this stuff. Thank you very much. This is this is really cool. I I'm really digging it. So thank you.